Uh, if you're going to do reason, a reasonable job of engineering anything, you need to start out with an understanding of your requirements. So what are we trying to accomplish here? I'm not exactly sure what that thing is up there. Oh, no, it's vanished. There, there. Okay, there we are, green laser. So our overall goals for this workshop and symposium are fourfold. First, uh, we are hoping to create a strategic working paper, i.e. the final report from this meeting, that will um, uh, communicate to the international moon community those things that we believe are important across a wide range of topics uh, and to set the stage for revectoring the activities of the Moon Village Association and its working groups for the next 12 months. So as Giuseppe mentioned in his remarks at the beginning of the morning, this is not, a, this is not just to sit and listen, this is to get in and do work. Uh, secondly, uh, Giuseppe alluded to the idea of a Moon Village principles. And Giuseppe originally suggested uh, these, this as an idea and calling them principles. And I immediately said, um, oh no, that's a terrible idea. We shouldn't call them principles. Uh, however, um, after thinking about it for a few days, I came around to believe that I was entirely wrong and Giuseppe was entirely right. We will talk about what the Moon Village principles are in a few minutes. Uh, third, I want to talk about this more, but we, want, we heard a wonderful talk this morning from NASA on why go to the moon, the, the science and so on, the human exploration. And then we heard a wonderful talk from George Sowers with an entirely different perspective about activities on the moon and, and so on. And so uh, there is, I want to uh, show you something and talk about it a little bit. And um, it's, a, it's something that Giuseppe and I have talked about over the last few months. It's coming up with a consensus international position that's simple, succinct, nicely written, and says, why the moon? And lastly, uh, we want to kick off the working group activities for 2019. So the approach. Uh, we are, we've identified key topics and questions, and we're going to provide those to you, the participants in this workshop portion of the meeting. Uh, and we're going to, uh, I'm pointing my laser pointer at the, at the screen here in front of me, really doesn't show, <laughs> do a lot of good, uh, but I can see it clearly. Uh, we're going to in engage uh, with those members of the Moon Village Association who can't be here with us. Uh, we're going to identify and discuss possible gaps, i.e. things. Here's what we were working on. What do you think we should be working on? What else should we be working on that we're not currently working on? Uh, there will be a series of catalytic presentations in each of five breakout sessions, which I will describe in a few moments. Uh, and we want to capture uh, your thoughts and your inputs using a toolkit that I've used many times before called an ITBC, which is an issue to be considered. So these are the requirements, and from this flows the organization of the uh, working portion of the meeting. Uh, first, the ITBCs. This is derived from something that I was taught in the Deep Space Network called a problem failure report, where you say, here's the problem. You say when it occurred. You say, uh, you give a description of the problem. And then you write up how we are solving it or how we propose that it should be solved. And then we say who we are and, and uh, why, we're, why you should listen to us. And uh, this was used throughout the Deep Space Network. It was all done in, in, uh, in the old days. Five forms. The golden rod would go into the book. The, you know, the blue one would go to management and so on. Uh, now it's all electronic. But we are going to be giving you, excuse me one second. We are going to be giving out to the working groups, and you can, uh, we got 100 copies here, uh, copies of these ITBCs, and asking, please, anything you hear, you see, you think, you want to get it into the, into the mill, it, it will go in, it will be 
documented, it'll go to into, a, into a, 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 a database. It will not be locked. We'll have these uh, in each of the rooms, and also they will be available for use uh, electronically, not only during the meeting, but after the meeting. What we did last time, which was very successful, is we kept the door open for two weeks after the formal end of the workshop at ISU, and we gave everybody a chance to send in their ideas, their issues, and so on, suggestions for two weeks, and then cut it off so that we could begin really working on the final report from last year's meeting. So that's the plan here as well. So you write things down, but also if you have an idea, you can get an electronic copy, it's just a Word document, and write up other things in addition later. Um, if you'd like to use an electronic version of the ITBC here rather than handwriting it, that's fine. Uh, but please just uh, send me an email. I'll be checking my email during the course of the next hour or so, and I'll send you back the form. Secondly, the Moon Village Principles. What's I have a box. Email? What's your email? Oh, uh, well, how are you? if you don't know my email, why are you here? No. So uh, please use John, J-O-H-N, dot C dot Mankins at moonvillageassociation.org. So, the Moon Village Principles. We are, we are not a government agency. We don't have hundreds of millions of dollars to put on the street. We can try to influence people by you know, uh, uh, meetings like this, uh, prizes, small prizes, like uh, were awarded just a few minutes ago. But in order to try to um, promote the consensus views of the Moon Village Association and those of us here, uh, the idea that Giuseppe came up with and that we have agreed upon is to identify principles. Those are the, these are the principles that we believe should be followed by governments, companies, uh, private sector individuals, whoever they are, who are going to the moon over the coming years. And this set of principles articulates this point of view. And what we are asking is not for wordsmithing. Everyone will read it and will have a slightly different view on this should be this word or this. But rather, we are asking you, how do you feel about it? Is there anything major that is missing? Is there anything that's here which is truly offensive? Let me, let me, give, you an, let me give you an example. So principle number one. Activities that support the Moon Village shall adhere to valid international rules and agreement dealing with human activities in space and international norms such as the Outer Space Treaty of 1967 and conduct thoughtful, and re, uh, thoughtful, and re conduct thoughtful consideration and respect for the cultural heritage of humanity on the Moon. So international norms, international agreements, and a, and, and a uh, reasonable respect and consideration for our shared cultural heritage. That's a principle. And then the others are like that. And then there are some things that are more uh, tactical, uh, and those are, the, those are the goals. We would like, if it was possible, to end up after this meeting tomorrow, we don't have to come to closure on this today, but we'd like to get this discussed, especially in the working groups, by one of the working groups in particular, which I'll identify. Uh, and we'd like to end up with some, if, if it's possible, if everybody in this room reads this and says, well, fix this a little bit, you know, but this, is, I agree with this. This is right. And if all, we all agree to that, then we have an international, broadly based consensus on a set of principles that we can use, then use to discuss the broad range of activities that are being pursued vis-a-vis -vis the moon. So in 1963, uh, Dr. Robert Jastrow and Dr. Homer uh, Huell of the National uh, Aeronautics and Space Administration published a little pamphlet. It was in August of 1963. Uh, if you have not read it, I'm actually, we will be providing as a part of the proceedings an electronic copy of this brochure and the really charming art. Now think about the world in 1963 vis-a-vis uh, -vis the moon and international relations and international tensions and so on. 
this little booklet, which was printed up out of the thousands and distributed broadly, basically articulated why. And it did so in a simple, powerful, and clean manner. Uh, we, are, we haven't quite decided how we would communicate this, but the direction that we want to go is to have such a thing today and to have it not be just for the US, but an international <laughs> statement of why the moon. Uh, why go to the moon, why operate on the moon, title would change a little bit. This is why land on the moon, uh, but it's a really a beautiful thing. And so we want to talk about that as well, not in terms of a specific uh, set of text, but rather in terms of what should be reflected in this text. To get to this point, so the, the, the report, guidance for next year, key topics, begin to talk, look at the principles think, and think about why we should go to the moon, all those things. The meeting from here on forward for the rest of this afternoon until we reconvene late in the day is going to be organized into five breakout groups. Uh, the first breakout group is a focus, the first three focus on what and when. And they are organized according to the three scenarios that have been defined by the architecture working group over the last year of the Moon Village Association. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment, but the, the, about the scenarios. But the focus here is uh, yeah, I want to I want to stay with this for a second. Second breakout room. To, by the way, we have three rooms on the second floor, two rooms on this floor. The three rooms on the second floor. 236, 239, and 240 are all going to be focused on architectural concepts, uh, uh, standards, human factors, and so on. The two rooms, breakout sessions downstairs, are cross-cutting, focusing on why and how. And the why has to do with things like uh, Moon Village missions, markets, economics, uh, critical services, and so on. Obviously. These are cross-cutting, so they touch on all the different uh, ar architectural issues as well. And lastly, um, how, and focusing on uh, cooperation and coordination, uh, on outreach, on outreach, <laughs> uh, on uh, uh, cultural considerations, uh, uh, and on uh, analogs. Since analogs are emerging as sort of a key near-term activity that has to do with uh, uh, cooperation, coordination, and the other factors. Now, I, many of you probably have not yet seen the scenarios, but you may or may not have heard about them, so let me tell you briefly what they're like. The scenarios are uh, essentially one, oh, the basic idea is nobody knows the future. All government employees think they know the future. They think they, everything's going to unfold exactly the way they planned it until they get a new boss or a new government, and then everything they were doing is thrown out, and they start over again. And then the new program is just as real and just as certain. In fact, some of the most successful planning for the future is based on scenarios as articulated in the 60s by a gentleman by the name of Pierre Wack and used by the, the Shell Oil, Royal Dutch Shell uh, Futures uh, Planning Group, very famous in the literature. Uh, in our case, we are, we are identifying three scenarios for how things might develop on the moon based on three alternative drivers. The first driver is human spaceflight, i.e. the plans of the Office of Spaceflight at NASA headquarters are exactly the way the moon will proceed over the next 30, 40 years, period. Two, the second scenario is science-based. Let's uh, suppose that that's not the way the future is, but instead that in fact the moon becomes like Antarctica, i.e. it's all for science, that's, that's what we do there. Uh, you don't want any kind of, you don't want to interfere with r big radio telescopes on the far side of the moon, whatever it is. And the third one is commerce. Let's suppose that the current trends in commercial space proceed, and during the next half a dozen years, there is a transformation in what we can do vis-a-vis -vis the moon. 
and uh, things like uh, um, Elon Musk's uh, hope to send the BFR and BFS around the moon with a billionaire within a half a dozen years. That kind of thing. Or be, have the capability to land 100 tons uh, at somewhere in uh, cislunar space within a, dozen, within a half a dozen years. Or, because you, you may have noticed in the charts that we've seen so far, you don't see BFR or BFS. It's not part of the official roadmap. But if it happened, it would be a profound transformation. So, these are the three scenarios, and this is, as I described to uh, some of you at different occasions, this is like uh, Mongolian barbecue. You put all the things you want into the bowl, and before you give it to the guy to cook it, you choose, uh, I want two, two splashes of sauce A, three splashes of sauce B, and one of sauce C, because sauce C is a little spicy and I don't want too much. So we think the future will really be, so if we don't think any of these is the future, the future will be some combination of these three scenarios. But we want to define the scenarios and understand the scenarios so that we have an understanding of what, would, what will be the triggers. How will we be able to support our membership over the next year or two or three? Okay, this is happening. That means we appear to be following this kind of path. Or this has happened. That means this is the path, i.e. understanding how the future might be allows you to better perceive when the future is changing before your eyes. We have a common starting point, uh, which was alluded to earlier. This chart just shows the swarm of activities internationally, both private and governments, that are all going to the moon over the next uh, couple of three years. Uh, we've gotten today, and we'll get more tomorrow, new insight into how this chart should look, but there's a set of things which are pretty well established over the next five years. And then out here past about 2020, 2021, there's the great unknown, the void, where it's likely that all of these countries will not just go to the mood once and then stop, but rather that there will be things that are learned about the resources at the poles, about the opportunities for uh, markets and so on, that will lead to all sorts of new activities in here. Things like uh, Blue Moon or BFR or, uh, or other things. So we have a common foundation. All the, all the scenarios start with a common view of what is the next few years going to be like. The breakout sessions I mentioned before, I put them in just to remind you. So one is focused on human spaceflight. One is focused on um, science, one is focused on commercial. Now, in the breakout session, the discussion on human spaceflight, the focus is on human spaceflight, but obviously human spaceflight will involve pieces of science and pieces of commercial, commercial ventures, commercial uh, services. Similarly, science is science-driven, but it will involve human activities, and it'll involve commercial services. And commerce, uh, it, it, it's enabled by uh, revolutionary or transformational new commercial opportunities, but as we've heard this morning, there's a need for com government customers in both human spaceflight and science. So uh, although you're in a, you will be assigned a breakout room, uh, it doesn't mean that just because you're in science you can't talk about human spaceflight, but you should do it with the focus being on a science activity. Okay, uh, in the slide deck and in your various breakout rooms, these charts have been put up, I hope, uh, appropriate to each of your breakout sessions. So there's uh, information on the architectures working group. Each, each of the decks which goes with each of the rooms includes uh, some key questions or topics that you might want to consider talking about and uh, some examples. Uh, this is alpha, it gives some, some it get, uh, this uh, just documents the primary assumptions. What are the assumptions that define this scenario for the group that will be talking about it? And again, this is all in your room. And this is, a, this is an error, I apologize. Uh, this first column should, be bold, should have been bold and this one should have been pale. And I just screwed up. 
then science, same thing. And this one is correct, i.e. this one is bold and these guys are pale. This one I did right and then I copied it and I didn't fix it, I apologize. Uh, and then lastly, uh, commerce. Commerce and settlement <coughs> dominated. Uh, and it's the last one. Now each of these three charts is trying to get your thinking going. For those of you who are in the architecture groups, what kinds of um, systems might be needed for this scenario? So for example, for uh, development and settlement, there's probably a nearer term need for uh, surface habitation that, and, and more aggressive surface habitation than would be true for say a science dominated case where, where you're basically looking at just minimal science and exploration and that kind of thing. So these are not intended to be um, exclusive. They're not in intended to be dictatorial. They're intended to suggest to you the kinds of things that you might want to identify either in your discussion or in the, uh, the follow-up ITBC. Uh, if you look at the material that was presented by George Sowers just a few minutes ago, in that one picture, you could see a wealth of systems that were all identified as being part of this scenario for 2030. I think it was 2030, George? That's, that's only 12 years from today. So that's, that's a near-term case where development leading to settlement really takes off enabled by lunar resources. So it's an excellent, excellent example. This is intended just as, an, as a list of the kinds of pieces that make up such a future. Uh, then there's, similarly for the other groups, some questions, uh, examples of the kinds of standards, um, human systems, example issues. I'm not gonna go through all of these because they're in, these, like I said, these are in your rooms. Uh, I will mention that there is a database that we are working on which will capture the results of all of your discussions. For example, if you identify uh, in the science working group, science focused working group, a radio telescope on the far side of the moon as a key thing, well then we want to flesh that out a little bit, document it in the database, and have that be one of the potential science missions that would be part of an integrated uh, forecast made by the Mar Moon Village Association, provided to our members and provided to the larger lunar community. Uh, okay. Same thing for economics. Um, what are the missions? What are the markets? Some three categories for missions and markets. Plus, so one obviously is human spaceflight. Another one is human spaceflight precursor missions, i.e. things that you, robotics would do just because you were going to do humans, not because of science or some other purpose. Science, commercial, and technology. I don't know how many of you are familiar with a, a document developed in the mid-1990s by a really uh, bright man, former NASA Langley, Bill Pyland. Uh, there was a, it was a thing called the Commercial Space Transportation Study. So the CSTS essentially looked at the markets that might emerge to low lunar orbit, low Earth orbit, if the cost of reaching low Earth orbit were drastically dropped and with an eye towards drop by how much. And so there were, in fact, uh, price market curves that were in that report. Now, in the next four hours, we're not going to duplicate that report. But to start getting toward that direction, one thing that we, you might wish to talk about in the markets and economics group is what are those drivers? And I've supposed here that one such uh, performance parameter that will um, be enabling or <coughs> preventing future lunar markets is the cost, cost of transportation. There, I, I'm not saying what the others might be, um, but the question is, what are those, what are those um, key parameters which in the future we could further elaborate on and try to better understand what would it mean if the cost of getting to the moon was $100,000 a kilo? The surface of the moon, that is to say. What if the cost of getting to the surface of the moon was $10,000 a kilo? What if it was $100 a kilo? And, and try to understand what markets are sensitive to what parameters and therefore where are their opportunities 
to uh, eliminate barriers. Uh, this just summarizes all those systems again, because all of them are kind of relevant. Um, and then there's critical services, which is of course very related to the previous topic, and key questions. And uh, just as an example, critical services might include these areas, like power and transportation and communications. Those are, mar those are classes of services. And one would expect that these things might emerge over time, where initially you need uh, transportation services, and in the midterm you might need habitable volume services, and so on. So in the conversation having to do with the markets and the services that might be provided to serve those markets, the question is, what kind of opportunity is there for the private sector, and when might it come along? And uh, we, we have articulated in the past that the Moon Village Association, we hope, will be the Moon's Industry Association, i.e., will be the Industry Association for the Moon. There's a lot of different associations. There's the Aerospace Industries Association, AIAA, all these organizations. Most of the organizations that have to do with the Moon tend to be science-focused. Or, or, or coordinating between the big human spaceflight uh, national programs. And our, one of our purposes is to serve, uh, basically serve all of you by being the association for your firms, your universities, uh, your activities to coordinate and to communicate in a, in a as Giuseppe described, in a neutral and, and a fair way. Cooperation and coordination. Uh, Obviously, there's a lot of past uh, agreements. Uh, here's some specific examples. Uh, just to speak to that for 10 seconds, obviously we do not want to um, somehow try to write uh, you know, uh, a new uh, moon treaty. But there have to be some ways to coordinate activities other than through big nation-to-nation nation -nation agreements. And the question is, what kinds of activities and what kinds of uh, coordination? So uh, some examples include um, things like uh, specific agreements. Uh, standards, I, I don't know if we, we think about it. Standards are a key tool, uh, either IEEE or ISO, or they're a key tool for coordinating without uh, restricting. And they, they enable, good standards enable enormous <coughs> innovation. And uh, where the nations are at the moment, the government programs, they're taking the space station standard for, for various interoperability, and they're inching towards the gateway. <coughs> that is not going to do us any good at all if we want to establish standards for propellant, or life support uh, resources, or uh, common, uh, common uh, uh, safety considerations for spacesuits from different countries, so that you don't end up with a, you know, a bad movie scenario where one group is dying on the surface, but they can't come into the other uh, habitat because they don't have the same kind of interface. Let's see if I can, oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. Pressing the wrong button multiple times still does nothing. <laughs> uh, the principles. So I talked about them previously, simple declarative statements uh, about what we believe the organizations participating in our journey to the moon should try to accomplish and how they might accomplish it, not with what they should do, but how. Um, we are thinking about an MVP award at future events, i.e. Uh, those who are familiar with American sports know that the MVP at the World Series game number three was a particular player who was the most valuable player. So the MVP award might be uh, given each year to those countries, programs, companies, universities, whoever, who not, not just one, but those are, who deserve recognition for what they accomplish going, taking humanity to the moon. They're not real rules. Uh, and they don't have to be unanimously adopted by every single member of our association. We don't expect that. But we want to get to a consensus point of view that these principles are uh, a reasonable way to inform the lunar community about how we are playing together. 
uh, analogs, I won't go through in detail, uh, and cultural considerations, which uh, I talked about previously, and outreach. Uh, I think one key area where we don't currently have a lot of outreach activities that I would like to ask that group to at least think about is STEM uh, and STEAM. So science, technology, engineering, arts, and um, mathematics uh, with regard to uh, how we can do a better job of, of addressing and getting the uh, academic community in terms of students, both uh, undergraduate, graduate, and um, earlier. Some scenarios. Sorry, strategies, come on, go ahead. I can actually hear it clicking, but it's not doing anything. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's a good reason. That's the last one. Okay, so um, outside, so before, before you ask me that que this question, so outside, uh, the rooms have been prepared. I mentioned the rooms previously. Uh, outside, there are sheets which we'll be making available to you where you can look, and you have to look, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare a tag for each and every one of you. You have to look and find out where you've been placed. Uh, the rooms seat about 20 people. I've done it, I've just said, okay, I'm gonna put you here, I'm gonna put you there, and the, the only guideline is we would like to end up with about the same number of individuals in each place. Uh, just because you're in run, one room, one group, doesn't mean you can't contribute to the broader discussion because you can, using the ITBC forms. Uh, and if you just feel terrible about it and you want to make a change, feel free. But, but please also keep in mind that we're trying to not have everybody flee a topic that's not nearly as much fun as talking about human settlements or talking about whatever it is that you really, really love and you didn't really, really want to be stuck here. Um, we had a lot of folks sign up at the last minute and so if you signed up at the last minute, uh, I have two requests. One, find, make sure that you're not already put someplace. If you're not already put someplace, then please go ahead and uh, uh, try to go to one of the rooms where they need people. All the groups have uh, more than a dozen people. Some of them have about 16 or 15, 15 or 16 or 17. All of them have space for about 20, 21, 22 people. If you do decide to move to another room, there is a sign-up sheet on the wall outside, and every, every door has, this, has the, uh, the label saying which room, the, which people are supposed to be in here. If you decide to join that room, please add your name, handwrite your name on there so we know who was where so that we have specific product. So we can, we can work back with the people appropriately. Second request, if you signed up at the last minute and you are staying for dinner or you're coming tomorrow and you haven't paid, <laughs> the uh, Eventbrite website, accessible through the MVA website, will be open for <laughs> through the end of tomorrow. So I would ask you all on the honor system, because a lot of people came in late, if you haven't paid, please pay. <laughs> if you're planning to, you know, I'm just gonna be here for tonight, and maybe in the morning, and then I've gotta catch my flight, which is true for a number of people, you'll miss out on the wonderful concluding remarks that Giuseppe and I still have to plan sometime in the next day, <laughs> but, and moreover, uh, you, don't, you don't have to pay full price. So if you're not actually, if you're just here and you're planning to leave tonight or something, uh, then please, uh, you know, you don't have to pay uh, uh, extra at this time if you haven't already. But if you are going to stay, then please do register and, and uh, pay. Um, what else? Let's see. Hmm? Ah, so the leads. Thank you, Giuseppe. So tentatively, we have, um, we have some students from Madhu Thangavalu's class. Uh, gentlemen, where are you? Are you here? Alex, are you here? There's Ivan. Alex, are you here? Alex, anybody else? Just, just you two. Okay, good. 
So I would ask you guys to be kind of floaters and, and wander around and make sure that you know, everything's going on track, sort of circulate um, and settle where there, where there as an appearance that there's a need for help. Um, what, one second, there we go. Um, no, 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 I'm, I'm coming to it. It is indeed. Okay. I apologize for the brief delay. And I'd be happier if I could find the file. The reason I can't find it is because it's open. <laughs> okay, so. John Rummel. I would like to ask if you would be so kind as to help um, keep uh, breakout group number one on track. That's the human spaceflight group. Sure we can. Sure. <laughs> um, recognizing the limitations. And uh, I would ask that if when you get, when everybody gets in the room and you get organized, if you would identify a co-chair, a co-lead. Uh, group two, which is the science-driven uh, exploration. Um, tentatively, at least, I've identified uh, George Sowers uh, and uh, uh, Inatani Sensei. There you are, sorry. Uh, if you would please be the co-leads for, for that um, architectural group. Uh, for group three, uh, uh, Kat and um, Dallas Bienhoff. Where's Dallas? Shot. Shot. There. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Uh, for uh, group four, which is um, the economics, markets, and missions, uh, Mark Knoll <laughs> and Rob Chambers. Um, and group five, which is the cross cutting and, and cooperation and all those things, and analogs, uh, Richard Fisher. And uh, Miss Suzu, if you would be so kind. And you can identify, as I said, you can identify exactly which group you're so supposed to be in and so on uh, with the data sheets that are out uh, at the registration desk. And you'll just have to get, they're, they're, packaged, they're stapled together in package. We've squandered a bunch of Xeroxing and so on. Um, there was one more thing that I was trying to remember. Um, oh, so every... Uh, every group is asked to please uh, include uh, uh, catalytic presentations. When you see your list of names, there's a box that says CC, question mark. That's catalytic, uh, con well, catalytic presentation. I should have been CP. <laughs> it says CC. I apologize. Anyway, uh, the idea is uh, many of you asked uh, if you could make a presentation at the workshop. And because the plenary sessions basically filled up, we were wildly more successful than we thought we were going to be, a number of the presentations that are more focused in their character uh, need to be made in the breakout sessions that will begin in a few moments. If you are in a breakout session, you will not see your name someplace specifically, but you know that you submitted one and you know that I said yes. So I would ask you to please uh, negotiate or uh, settle on with the uh, the leads in the room, get on the list, and give your catalytic presentation. The idea of the catalytic presentations is to stimulate discussion and to get the ball rolling. Uh, and if your catalytic presentation, by chance, has nothing to do with the group that you're in, <laughs> I'd be shocked because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, of, of interstitial tissue, a lot of cross-connectivity. So. Uh, with that, I think we will stop. And any other further actions? Oh, 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 oh! You're, you're quite right. You're quite right. That should have been that should have been here also. So, so the products, and I, 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 I had another version of this that had that in. That was the last slide that it didn't come up. So the products from the working groups are from these uh, breakout sessions are one, the slides that are presented by individuals, their catalytic presentations. Two, the ITBCs, things that you write up and you provide and, and, uh, and that you have there. 
three, the summary sheet that says who are the actual participants in that group. So you start out with a, with a starting point and then it'll be adjusted. And four, a brief set of slides uh, for presentation uh, in the plenary session uh, tonight to say this is what we did so far, just a, like, a, like one page, and then tomorrow in a little bit more detail. So you have some time to develop a little bit better slides, which is a report from your breakout session. I, I think maybe 30 or 40 slides full color with video would be fine. <laughs> Nervous laughter, it's a good thing. And, and, I, uh, and the, we have wonderful AV support. The, the breakout rooms will not be videotaped, uh, and the, uh, but uh, we will, I think someone will come around. We'd like to get pictures and so on. Please do capture all the slides. Don't, if people make a catalytic presentation, they need to get on to, and every room has a thumb drive. I provided a blank thumb drive to each room. So um, three are red, uh, one is, uh, uh, or sorry, two are red, uh, that should be down here, and the three upstairs are either blue or green. That's just so that I know what I'm looking at. Okay, any questions? Uh, I'm wondering, could we put up the rosters right now on the screen so everybody knows where to go? Uh, and, and, and as well as having it outside, um, give me a moment. although they'll still have to think about it. Yeah. I, but I don't want to use, I don't want to lose the. Let's see if it'll. Good. Okay, got it? Okay. It's not, um, it's not, it's not showing my screen. Nope. It's all, they're all outside anyway. Yes, I do. That is my background. There we go. Okay. So if you want to, this is breakout group one. So if you want to take a moment and look and find yourself, and also, like I said, there's hard copy outside, and there's also uh, uh, copies in the um, bigger. Oh, it's perfectly clear to me. So are many things, John. <laughs> Top down. Okay. So this is group one. The the room is in the in the um, the room for breakout group one is two thirty six. It's in the program. So has everybody found themselves if they're in group one? Scroll up a little bit. Scroll up. No, no, it's everybody. <laughs> well, stop that. Stop that. God bless us. I've gotten too many emails in the last few minutes. Okay, there we go. Okay. Group two. I know, I know. So Just a second. Smaller but better focus. Sadder but wiser, I think, is the rest of that. Group two. No, no, that's all. We lost Jim Burke, but that's that's where he's. I think he, I think he already headed out to, to go to where they were going to go. Okay. Group three. Because I'm going to another page. Each workbook page is treated as a separate file. They're just linked. Okay, group, that's group three.
Ready? Group four. Ole, and Giuseppe, you said you wanted to float, so you, you and I are both, we got, uh, uh, we're off board. Okay, that's group four and group five. And you'll notice the, the erroneously labeled CC question mark, that's for the, uh, the catalytic uh, presentation. Okay? And like I said, the sheets are outside, you can pick one up. And those of you who did, are not, who did not sign up uh, early enough to get into this database, just please go to a group that needs you and uh, um, fill out a bunch of ITBCs. Thank you very much. I know. So, right now, this is my phone. Oh, there it is. So right now it is two o'clock. Right now it is two o'clock. I'm going to ask everybody to come back. Everybody should come back at five thirty. So we'll leave the same length of time for the working groups. We won't we won't cut them short because of the the uh, getting started a little late. Thank you very much. Have a good time. I hope. Okay.